HW, and thank you so much for watching Tone Junkie TV. I remember being a young man in the late 90s, early aughts, and uh, scouring the internet, you know, the Les Paul uh, forum, and um, uh, the gear page. Uh, it was much, much different gear page back then, much smaller. And, uh, you know, places like Harmony Central, and I would always hear these, these guys talk about blackface Fender amplifiers and how they were really the holy grail of, uh, of American clean tone and sort of some of the best Fenders ever made. Obviously there's love for Tweed and Brownface and stuff. But really, most of the conversations were around how Blackface was amazing and Silverface was uh, kind of a compromise. At the time, I remember going to see a lot of live bands and uh, so many of the acts and stuff played Silverface Fenders. And that makes sense. Silverface amps were a lot cheaper. In fact, now, even, even now, late 70s Silverface stuff is just not that desirable. Pretty much you get to 75, 6, uh, 7, 8, 9, you know, all those later Fender years just go for so much cheaper. And there's a lot of interesting designs there. You know, they did some things that, that haven't been loved by players, but one of the things I've noticed compared to then to now is now a lot of people view the early Silverface stuff as not really lesser quality, but sort of a viable alternative and just a different voice. And that those circuit changes that were made sometimes are better. Um, Silverface amps have been loved around Nashville um, for a long time, especially for some of that Tele twang tone. But of course, there is no uh, shortage of love for traditional warmer blackface stuff. Where I have seen the biggest change is in the sort of drip edge, the 68 and sometimes on some models 69, the drip edge. And drip edge refers to the white piping that goes around the edge of the grill cloth on uh, those very first model silver face amplifiers. So when I was shopping for some amps to make some profile packs with, I found a couple of Princetons and I wanted to compare the silver face to the blackface because I've sometimes heard people say that these um, these silver face amps, especially with the drip edge, have the least differences or are closest to blackface circuits. Now that varies a bit and you got to understand that Fender, Leo Fender was a notoriously cheap person. He, um, he went so far as to reuse his styrofoam coffee cup. Um, he was, I shouldn't say cheap, he was frugal. And a lot of his designs have frugality in mind. A couple instances where you see that, Fender guitars are designed to have the necks replaced. Why? Because it's so much cheaper to replace a neck, unscrew it and sell somebody a new neck than it is to refret you know, a guitar, especially because you can only refret a guitar so many times before you have to replace the neck anyway, or at least give it a whole new fretboard. Another instance is the 1964 Tuxedo Princeton. This is an amp where um, literally Fender had designed a new Princeton or had designed a new uh, cosmetic, uh, the blackface, you know, amps. But they made this tuxedo version in 1964 because they had so many parts left over from the brownface Princeton that they said, well, we just need to keep making these amps until we exhaust these parts. And that's commonly what they did. You saw that a lot in the brownface era and the tweed era of Fender. You didn't stop using parts until they were you were done with them. You know, you didn't just throw parts away. So those tuxedo fenders are are identical to the the, uh, the earlier brownface ones. So '64, even though it's a blackface, you get a uh, really a brownface fender uh, in sort of a dressed up formal tuxedo package. I'm sort of wearing a tuxedo outfit right here. Okay, well let me show you these two amps I bought. Um, they're beautiful. One is a one is a '65. And one is a 69. Let me flip this camera around. Boom, here is an original 1965 uh, Princeton amp. Not the Princeton reverb. Uh, not a big deal, just doesn't have reverb. Um, this is actually an amp that is just like uh, one of the amps that my grandfather bought when he was playing guitar. Uh, when he was younger than me. And that, that amp now belongs to a cousin of mine. I got a different one of my grandfather's amps. And here is a 69 uh, Silverface. This is the first year of Silverface and you can see the drip edge that goes along here. Um, these are really beautiful amps. Now there's a couple things that are different about um, these amps from each other. One is the circuit is slightly different, but the second is if you look in the back at the speaker itself. 
Okay, so in the 65, you can see this older, this is an older Jensen made uh, Fender branded speaker. Fender used these on all the Blackface amps um, at first, and slowly, even in 65, before they sold the company, um, or maybe right after they sold the company, um, they started using some of these Utahs, these blue label Utahs. You can see a much smaller magnet. And this is one reason that these two amps can have sort of very different voicings. I'll tell you, uh, I'll spoil it for you. The um, sort of, the idea that silver face amps are brighter than black face is really not without merit. It's kind of true. All right, so here we are in Rig Manager, and I've got the 65 Prince 3 pulled up. Um, this is about just the amp on like six or seven. Um, kind of cranked, you know? I mean, it's getting up there. It's a little more than halfway. But it's the 65, it's the blackface one. Um, and this is with the internal cab, and you can see right here I used a Fathead and a 545, and it sounds like this. So I'm playing this Sir Jam Pro. These are Thornbuckers, and they're really, they're really kind of nice pickups. Um, they've got a good amount of low end, uh, but they also have a good amount of top end. That's a little difficult to hear because it sounds, you know, kind of warm, and you might think it's the pickups. Well, um, here is the '69 with the same guitar, '69 Prince Three, same guitar, but different, different, um, different speaker, different microphone. And before I play this, I'm gonna tell you something. It might sound like I, I could be exaggerating the difference in the brightness here with mic placement. And I suppose that's possible, but I really did uh, kind of put these mics in the same spot on the cone. I mean, there wasn't a huge difference. Now, a little bit can make a big difference, but when I play these two amps next to each other, it's surprising how much brighter this 69 Prince 3 is. Check that out. So, so it's way different. Uh, it's actually way different. And um, so I noticed that these two amps actually got more alike uh, when I used a different cabinet, when I used the same cabinet as each other, which kind of leads me to believe that um, some of it is just the speaker and you know maybe some of it's how you mic it up, but man, it really is brighter in person. I'll tell you what it sounds like to me. It sounds like by 69, the circuit had changed enough that with the Princeton, they were going for a little more of the um, the bright cap sound, sort of the bright switch that you would find on some of the other Fender amps. It feels like by 69, the intention with the silver face was maybe, uh, with the Princeton anyway, was it's still single channel, it's still a pretty rock and roll amp, little, you know, little guy, but they were going for more of the brighter, 
uh, bright switch kind of thing. I'm not sure if there's a bright cap in there, but it sounds like it. And the Utah speakers, you know, they are uh, brighter. I have some Utahs in a Pro Reverb uh, from 66, and I'll tell you, that is a really great pairing. Because that Pro Reverb tends to be a little bit on the warmer side of the Fender amps even, um, it has a bright switch, but that's just a beautifully voiced amp. You know, it's, it's not as hi-fi as the Twin, uh, and it's kind of like, um, I've always thought of it like this. Deluxes, Twins, and Super Reverbs to me seem to be in a family. And then Princeton's uh, Pro Reverb and Basements seem to be the other kids in that family. You know, they're a little, they are a little more, to me, rock and roll-y than the other ones. A Deluxe is pretty rock and roll. But, um, but you know what I mean? It's just, they, they, they sound a little bit different um, and I think a little more like each other. That's just my take. What the heck do I know? I do know this though. Blackface, Silverface, they're really beautiful amps. And this has really inspired me. I think what I wanna do, uh, just as an overall goal of my collection and Tone Junkie, um, I am going to, I am dangerously close to getting one of every Blackface amp. I realized, I just ordered a Vibraverb and a, a, a Vibralux. So the Vibraverb, the one, the big 115, like Stevie Ray Vaughan used, the Vibralux, the 210, you know, 210. I've done a Silverface Vibralux for the Kemper before, but um, since there's some new platforms coming out and stuff, uh, my goal is gonna be every Blackface amp and make, a, make like a whole pack of just that. You know, four, three to four profiles of each amp of every black face that was in 65. So I'm gonna need to still get a Tremolux and um, a Super Reverb. I've done a Super before, but I'll get one again. And then that's it. That's all I'm gonna need. Am I missing anything? No. I'm gonna consider Vibrachamp and Champ to be the same amp, um, but that's gonna be it. And then the next goal after that will be to get every 1969 or 68 Drip Edge amp and compare model to model and really compare the whole thing. And that way you can get sort of the black face and the early silver face sound. Now there is still a question of speakers, you know, by 65, they were using Utahs and stuff. Um, they kept using Utahs for a little while, but, but um, you know, before that there were some different speakers. Obviously, uh, you know, there's show, that like the Showman I have is a 215, they made a 115 cab. The basement can have a little 212 or a big 212. There's so many, there were so many variations actually. I don't know if I could ever cover them all, uh, but you could, you really could. And you know what? Maybe I'll throw a 64 Prince in there since that's kind of like the brown face thing. Anyway, I really enjoy these um, amps. I really enjoy these profiles. And if you're interested in checking those out, you can you can find them at ToneJunkieStore.com. I kind of think though this 65 Prince 3, which is actually free uh, in the Tone Junkie emails. If you didn't get it, you're not signed up for the emails. If you did get it, go back and play it. But uh, it's actually one of my favorites. I've been HW. Thanks so much for watching Tone Junkie TV. HW, ow! <laughs>